What are the two most important things you can learn about someone that will enable you to connect, influence, and persuade more effectively than ever before? And would you believe it if I said you could achieve all of this in just a single conversation? By the end of this video, you're going to know how to do that. Imagine if you, Yes, you could understand a person's deepest desires and their strategies to achieve them in just one conversation. How powerful would that be in your interactions? I'm really excited to share this with you because I've seen firsthand how this simple conversation hack can dramatically change your interactions. I've used it in my own life with incredible results and I can't wait to read about your experiences using it in the comments below. Now you might be thinking, wait, should this kind of powerful tool be shared openly? And it's a fair question. But as we journey through this video, I believe you'll come to understand why I'm choosing to share this with you today. But first, I'm going to give you a little bit of theory of how this works, and then I'm going to demonstrate it so you can see it in action. You're going to elicit values and criteria conversationally. That's all there is to it. If you're wondering what I mean, not only will I explain it and demonstrate it, as I've already mentioned, you will find a link to a PDF called Master the Art of Conversation immediately with these six simple questions. It's in the description below this video. Make sure you download it. It will give you the blueprint of how this works. What's a value? A value is a generalization about an experience that's important to you, according to my late mentor, Steve Andreas. For example, if you value passion, passion is a value. You've had passionate experiences, and because you like those experiences, you value passion. It's that simple. No need to complicate this. Now that you know what a value is, what is criteria? Criteria is how you experience a value. In this example, it would be how you experience the value passion. This is critical because it's different for everyone. Just because you share the same values as someone else doesn't mean that you do it the same way. If you don't understand someone's criteria for how they experience a value, especially a value that you share with that person, you might repel people by imposing your assumptions about what passion means to them, for example. Don't do that. When you use this in conversations, any conversations from sales to dating and everything in between, just asking value and criteria questions will make the person you're talking to light up and not wanna leave your side because you will make them feel amazing. They will love that you're showing so much interest in them, but it doesn't stop there. When you go into advanced mode, which means you pay attention to the information they're giving you, you can use that information to become incredibly persuasive. They're basically giving you the keys to their kingdom. All you have to do is use them, but make sure you do so wisely. This is a very powerful process. Use it honestly and with intent of creating a mutually satisfying outcome. If you don't, this can really backfire. All right, let's get into the demo. This is Yulia and she is my wife, so she's used to me asking questions like this, but none of this is scripted. So the questions I will be asking her, she's probably heard before because I've, I normally elicit her values and I elicit criteria, but th for this particular conversation, we're not, I've not told her what to say. The answers are going to be real. Are you ready? Yes. What would you like to talk about? What area of your life is fresh on your mind right now that you would, that you enjoy talking about? Probably career. Okay. I'm pretty excited these days about my work. Okay, let's talk about career then. Okay. What's important to you about your career? So career gives me a lot of satisfaction. And so for example, these days when I really wanted to push myself because we prepare for a trip, I just feel so great at the end of the day when I know how much I've been able to achieve. And I like pushing myself, I like challenging myself and overcoming those challenges. It's really fulfilling. So you like challenges because challenges are opportunities. Would you say that challenges are opportunities for you to achieve something? Yeah, it makes me feel intelligent. And I, I love challenges because I feel like it makes me feel like I'm growing and I really want to see myself grow as a career, as a, my expertise. Mm -hmm. And challenges is the way that I feel like I'm earning more points towards that. So you like achieving, mm -hmm. you like feeling intelligent yes and in that process you like to grow yes okay and so just out of curiosity uh how do you know when you're growing i think it actually has to do with this type of challenges or whenever i see that i'm doing smart tasks that maybe i haven't done before i'm 
facing something that I haven't done before and I find a way or a workaround to fulfill it. And that gives me the sense that I know more than what I knew before. Or, for example, I work with processes or systems that I've created in the past and now I'm finding a more efficient way to do it. And I'm looking at it and like, yeah, I didn't know this back then, but I know now because of my experience. And so all of these things that happen day to day gives me the sense of growth. Okay, great. So when you're achieving, when you're feeling intelligent because you're being challenged to grow, what does that do for you? It makes me so happy. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm so excited. I mean, look at me these past few days, you know, I mean, I can't wait to get back to work. I'm, um, yeah, I feel challenged and happy, excited, uh, motivated. I really, really like it. What's important to you about being happy? Uh, everything. I don't know. It's like, who doesn't want to be happy? It's just, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the ultimate goal, I would say, you know, you okay. just want to be happy. Okay. And how do you know it when you're happy? I just feel very pleased and I feel welcoming to any challenge. I do not get angry or upset. I'm kind of smiling more, even though I smile a lot, but I just feel like I'm more positive in my uh, energy and what I put out there. And um, I think I'm also overcoming challenges much better or failures whenever I'm happy. Um, I see negative experiences in a different way. I see more of them as opportunity to grow rather than to be upset that things aren't going well. It's more like, oh, another challenge, let's overcome it. Okay, so would you say your openness to challenge is a good indication that you're happy? Definitely, yeah. But it's more than just that. What else is it? Um, smiling a lot, so definitely that's it. But you probably couldn't just force a smile and then say, oh, well, kind of like fooling yourself into being happy. It seems like it takes something else for you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I just feel fulfilled overall. I just feel like I can achieve and I think it's kind of spreading in other areas of my life. It's not like, you know, for example, right now, what I'm doing in my career and all of these uh, challenges make me very happy. But I feel like this happiness is kind of also spreading in other areas of my life. I'm very satisfied with my exercise routine. I'm very satisfied with um, personal life and relationships. So are you trying to say your happiness would sp spilling over from your career to other areas of your life? It does. It, it definitely does. Okay. Okay, so obviously her values are challenge, growth, intelligence, happiness, and accomplishment. And some of the ways that she goes about doing this is being open to new challenges and taking on those challenges. Also, intelligence is another one of your values. She wants to do things that make her feel smart. And that is how she goes about doing that is being challenged and then and being challenged, being able to overcome the challenge and experiencing growth and then you get to experience that intelligence. And then when you're doing all this in your career, it makes you happy. And it sounds like the happiness spills over into other areas of her life, which I could then ask her about, and we could take that uh, even further. Do you, would you say that your vision is a little bit clearer now than it was before about your career? Yeah, it is clearer. Okay, and now that it's clear, does it feel more compelling and motivating? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Now, is this going to turn you into a pickup artist or a persuasion monster? Before I answer that, I just want to make a few comments. The two most important things you can learn about someone is what they want and how they get it. Values and criteria. As you can see, this does take some practice. Remember to have fun with it and enjoy practicing it in conversations. You're only going to get better and better at it. Remember to check out the free resources in the description of this video that I mentioned earlier about mastering the art of conversation. My experience with doing this and teaching it is that you will feel a strong connection with the person that you're doing it with to the point of wanting them to get what they want almost as much as they do. If you can help them do that, you've got just what they need and it's a win for both of you. If you don't, because you understand them well, you will still want them to get what they want. So unless you're a compulsive liar or a sociopath, I think they're undisputed masterpieces, hip to be square. You're not going to make promises you can't keep. Sure, there are compulsive liars and sociopaths out there who are doing bad things, but they will do bad things regardless if they learn this technique and regardless if they learn NLP. They've been doing it throughout history well before NLP was created. Now that you know this, you can be extra cautious if you think that someone is a liar or a sociopath and is trying to use this on you. Otherwise, 
why would you not want someone to be interested enough to ask you about what you value and how you fulfill your values? It's how I start every coaching session with a new client because my job is to help them get what they want. If you like this video, then you should definitely watch another one. Oh, like this one right here.